I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a problem on standard normal distribution. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'm professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the creator of the Orgo Man products and the author of the Death Destroyer book. I'm here with Professor Blois today doing a problem on standard normal distributions. And this is a very important topic for the DAT. So, Professor, if you can show us what you came up with to help us out for the death. Sure, thanks. Uh, Thank you. Professor Boyce here. This is a problem involving the standard normal distribution, and it's going to involve the uh, 68, 95, 99.7% rule, or the empirical rule, as it's sometimes referred to. Let's read this. If the average age of retirement for a population is 64 years, and the distribution is normal, that is a key word. The distribution is normal. You know it's a normal dis distribution with a standard deviation of 3.5 years. Well, then we go uh, through a series of questions. Before we get to the questions, we already have enough information to draw the standard normal curve and label it. Two values determine the shape and the specific subdivisions of the standard normal curve. The mean, which in this case is 64, that's the score right in the middle that divides the standard normal curve in right in half. It is symmetrically distributed. The other statistic is the standard deviation, which is 3.5 years. All right. So what, what can we glean from the standard normal curve? We know by the empirical rule that 68% of the population will fall within one standard deviation of the mean. Okay, so 64 is the mean. One standard deviation, which is three and a half years, 64 plus three and a half is 67 and a half. 64 minus three and a half is 60.5. 68% of the population will fall between those two ages. 95% of the population then will fall within two standard deviations of the mean. So we take 64, add three and a half twice, we get 71 on the right, subtract three and a half twice, we'll get 64 on the left. 95% of the population falls within the ages of 57 and 71. Two standard deviations from the mean. And finally, the 99.7%, it means that that's the percentage of the population that will fall within three standard deviations of the mean. So how do we get those extreme values? We take 64 of the mean, add one, two, three, uh, uh, multiples of 3.5 and subtract three multiples of 3.5 and that's how we get those values that define the 99.7 percent portion of the standard normal curve. This is true for all standard normal, this distribution, not the numbers themselves, but the distribution and the number of standard deviations from the mean is uh, standard, is the same for all standard normal distributions. Now let's read the question and see if we can answer it based on our labeling here. What is the A? What is the approximate age range in which 95% of the people retire? Well, that's pretty much readable right from the graph. We can see just from our discussion that 95% of the population falls between 57 and 71. Okay, so 57 to 71. All right. Now let's go on to the next question. What percent of the population will retire at age 57 or younger? So 57 or younger falls within this category, within the 95% uh, boundary on the standard normal curve. What are we looking for? Let's shade the area under the normal curve that we're looking for. We're looking for this area right there. 57 or younger. So here's the, the mark 57 or younger. Well, what do we know? We know that 95% of the population is occupied by this area, right? I'll make a check this area. One, two, three, those, four, those four areas. And, 90, and five, the remaining 5% is divided between these two areas, okay? Those two areas then occupy the remaining 5% the shortage of uh, from 100%. So that 5% is divided symmetrically along the two tails of the normal distribution curve. So this is going to be 5% divided by two. The answer to part B is two and a half percent because that's the remaining portion of the 95% split in two. We're looking at the one tail. Finally, part C. At what, what percent of the population will retire at 53 and a half or younger? Well, 53, let's draw in blue the portion of the normal distribution curve we're looking for. It's this portion right here, this tail end. 
that's well beyond the third uh, standard distribution. We're just looking at one portion over here. Well, that's going to fall under the uh, interval of the di normal distribution curve that falls three standard deviations from the mean, from 53.5 to 74.5. So what's remaining? 99.7% of the population is going to be uh, uh, encompassed within each one of these areas which has a check mark on it, leaving only these little tail ends at the end. What's the total area of those tail ends? Well, it's the difference between 99.7% and 100%, which is what? 0.3%. Okay, 0.3%. But since that's divided symmetrically along both tails, we're just looking at the portion that's on the left tail, the lower tail, less than 53.5%. So we're going to divide that by two, and our answer to that is 0.15%. And that's how to use a problem using the empirical rule and the standard normal curve. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I'm not one to give compliments, but that was the most spectacular and easiest explanation that I've ever seen. That if you guys couldn't understand that, then I would let this go for the debt, because I think it's impossible for anyone to explain this in any simpler terms than you just taken something that a lot of kids find hard and you made it into something very, very simple. I'm glad you don't teach organic chemistry. If you were able to teach organic chemistry like this, I'd quit tomorrow. Because I don't think I would be able to teach any clearer than you just saw on standard deviation. All right, guys, I hope this helps. Professor Blois is always around on our study group. And if he bobs in, feel free to say hello and ask him a question. All right, good day to you.